What is this antique table I found today in the UK with a secret compartment full of hidden wires? The shop owner thinks it has something to do with faking seances. It is solid wood with a hidden nut and bolt on the underside. This is full of electric wires and they don't go anywhere or attach to anything. On each side of the table, there is a little hole drilled, only just wide enough for a wire to come out. I'm wondering why you would need to hide electrics inside a table. I wanted to get opinions and ideas from you before I buy it and wouldn't be interested if it was actually for something totally mundane. Many thanks in advance. It's an electrophone table, the first live streaming. It was used for receiving concerts and other public events from theaters, churches, etc., which were wired up with electrophone microphones. The table had connections for up to six headsets and the lid is removable via a wing nut under the tabletop base showing connection numbers. The Electrophone Company was founded in London in November 1894 and began offering a public service the following year in 1895, broadcasting news, entertainment and church services over the lines of the National Telephone Company. What are these ceramic tubes I found in an antique junk drawer at my grandfather's house? I think they were white and just discolored with age. The holes go all the way through and they all have a small horseshoe stamp on the thicker end. Does anyone have a clue? These are the ceramic tubes from knob and tube wiring. These were common use in North America from about 1880 to the 1930s. Ceramic tubes were inserted into holes bored in wall studs or floor joists, and the wires were directed through them. This kept the wires from coming into contact with the wood framing members and from being compressed by the wood as the house settled. My husband has this in his collection, but has no idea what its intended purpose is, other than being an ax. It's typical ax size with a rubber-like handle, and it says tested 15,000 volts on the handle. Does anyone know what this would have been originally used for? That's an aircraft escape ax. The design was patented in 1938 by the Chillington Tool Company in the UK. They were designed to cut through the aircraft's aluminum skin and could also insulate the user for up to 20,000 volts if he hit electrical wires. The horn is a pry bar type device, so you can slice into it with the edge and then pry it back after. The bottom is curved, so it doesn't get caught on anything because in the situation you're using this tool, even a few seconds delay getting it unstuck could cost lives. I have a very similar one my granddad got from a crashed Lancaster bomber during World War II. He was part of the recovery crew. It's an excellent little piece of history. What is this wooden Kershaw patent contraption with a lens at the front and one in the middle, separating two compartments with doors, a triangle of glass on top with another lens beneath and a reflective surface underneath that? The label says A Kershaw leads. It's 54 centimeters or 21 inches long at the base and around 19 centimeters or 17.5 inches wide. I found it in my grandparents' house. Any info on make or age would be appreciated. This is a magic lantern projector manufactured by A. Kershaw and Sons sometime between 1890 and 1920 in Leeds, England. While the invention of the magic lantern is generally seen to be in the 17th century, its greatest popularity as an optical projector spans the late 18th century to the early decades of the 20th century. It was used both as a means of entertainment and education. What is this stand found on a farm in Missouri, USA? It was placed outside on the patio near a barbecue grill and an outdoor fireplace. Is it related to horses? since the barn we are in has a lot of horses. Any ideas? It's a drink holder. I'm from Missouri, and we build things like this all the time in the redneck state. It very likely did come from an old tool stand that has been modified. I've got a neighbor who sells things like this. I haven't seen this specific piece, so I suspect it was a one-off, but that is absolutely typical rural Missouri make. What was this chair used for? It has cushion all along the flat edge of the top. I'm in the US, but the chair may not be. The seller said people used to sit backward on it. Is this true? 
It's a cockfighting chair, made in England in the middle part of the 19th century. It was designed for the sitter to sit facing the back of the chair. Due to the fact that such chairs were shown in illustrations of cockfights, it was thought for a time that they were only made for this purpose, more correctly called reading chairs. They were first made in England for libraries in the early 18th century. What is this hinged wooden box with a sliding lid? It's about a foot long and has no markings. I think it belonged to one of my grandparents. I found it in a box of random old stuff. Any idea what this is made for? It's an old school pencil case. It was a standard woodworking project for secondary school kids in the 60s and 70s. I made one, and so did my brother, and they were identical to this. A very simple build, but very effective. I stayed at a guest house in Texas, and there was this thing. It's made from a thick board and used as a coffee table. It's about 40 inches long by 14 inches wide and about 18 inches tall. Does anyone know what this would have been originally used for? It is called a cobbler's bench from the 19th century. It was formerly used by cobblers to repair and sometimes make shoes, belts, handbags, and other objects. Long ago, cobblers hammered nails and stitched threads to hold the parts of a shoe together. It has a seat at one end, compartments for tools and supplies, and a working area. I found this when I was cleaning my father's house. I'm not 100% sure if this is an antique or really what it is to be exact. It whistles when you blow through it. Any idea what it is? It's a bosun's call, also known as bosun's pipe or bosun's whistle. The history of this unique tool predates the United States by centuries, dating at least to the 13th century. However, there is evidence that navies have used pipes since antiquity. The bosun's call was predominantly used to issue orders during times when voices could not be heard over the rumbling sea. Early on, the pipe was a symbol of rank, perhaps due to the fact that these were worn by high-ranking officers to signal orders to the crew. With the advent of electronic communications, this began to change. However, bosun's pipes still play a key role in modern navies via signaling reveille and taps, as well as piping aboard officers in ceremonies. What is this silver tweezy thing with triangle notches I found in my grandmother's house? It has a silver stamp indicating it was made during the Third Reich, so it may be too old. I think it could be a can opener. I might just be using it wrong. Any idea what it is? Please let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Let's make life fun.